For the news conference happening right now, here's the news conference. M-U-I-S-E, his first name is M-A-R-C-E-L. Marcel Mews uh, is our investigator in charge for this investigation. Uh, but just given that we've arrived on scene today, it's very early. Uh, I've asked that he remain uh, at the command post to continue what he is doing so that I can brief you uh, so on what we're doing so far. Also with me is one of our newest board members. This is Alvin Brown, uh, and he, this is his training launch. So the NTSB arrived on scene at 6 a.m. Uh, to investigate an accident involving a Singapore registered vessel with the name Dali, D-A-L-I, uh, which made contact with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland at around 1.30 a.m. this morning. The vessel is uh, 985 feet long. It's a 95,000 gross ton container ship. Uh, I've seen uh, information about uh, crew members on board. We still need to verify the numbers of crew on board and their status. Under our memorandum of understanding with the Coast Guard, the NTSB is leading this investigation. The Coast Guard will support this investigation. Uh, our memorandum of understanding, for example, provides for uh, when an accident involves another mode of transportation uh, and other factors, the NTSB will lead that investigation. Now I want to thank the U.S. Coast Guard. We have a very cooperative relationship with the U.S. Coast Guard. I am particularly, I particularly want to thank Deputy Commandant for Operations, Vice Admiral Gautier. I want to thank Admiral Gilbreth, who is commander of the 5th Coast Guard District, and Captain O'Connell, who is the sector commander. Before I go on, on behalf of the NTSB, I want to extend our deepest sympathies to those who have been affected by this significant event. Uh, the NTSB, as I mentioned, does uh, many uh, significant transportation ev events, uh, not, just mer not just aviation. Uh, we do accidents uh, and incidents in marine uh, safety as well, and of course with bridges and other highway infrastructure. And for this, there were many that were Im affected uh, by this collapse, and our deepest sympathies uh, go out to the uh, families, loved ones, and others who have been affected. I'm going to get questions on fatalities and injuries, which I'm not going to answer. Uh, that is not something that the NTSB answers. I will refer you to local authorities on all of that information. What I can tell you is a search and rescue is still underway. Uh, so we are very hopeful, and again, our thoughts uh, are with the families and their loved ones. Again, we got here at 6 a.m., uh, and we are standing back uh, to allow the uh, Coast Guard and search and rescue to continue their search and rescue operations while we gather information from the command post. Uh, there is a lot of information that we can uh, begin to collect. We have a team of 24 on scene, including uh, Member Brown and uh, me. Uh, the team of experts include experts in nautical operations, and what they're going to look at and begin to collect is information on vessel operations, safety history, safety record, they'll look at the owner, uh, they'll look at the operator, and they'll look at the operations this day. Uh, today, they will also look at company policy, any sort of safety management system, uh, system or safety management program will be looked at by them and our human performance team as well. We have a human performance expert here. Uh, we have an engineering uh, team. We have survival factors and then we have a team here that is getting the recorders. 
We also have a highway safety team, our team out of the Office of Highway Safety, including structural engineers, uh, bridge experts who will be here uh, and are continuing to come in. We have a few here and uh, one or two others are coming in in the next few hours. We also have our family assistance team uh, on site and our uh, family assistance team works with those uh, that were affected by a particular event, uh, families, uh, friends, and other loved ones, and they will help them uh, get in touch with the resources they need while also providing them with the information that they need as we move forward with our investigation. This is a team effort. There are a lot of entities right now in the mm -hmm. command post all focused on search and rescue as they should be. Uh, but I do want to in particular thank the Coast Guard, uh, the Maryland Transportation Authority Police, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the Baltimore Fire, Baltimore Fire and Rescue, and the Maryland State Police. Uh, I also know that there are others on scene I'm sure I have missed. For example, Army Corps of Engineers is here. Uh, a great deal of uh, expertise and uh, all focused on what is very important, which is the people first. I have been in contact with my counterpart in Singapore. Uh, director Chong is the director of transport, the Transport Safety Investigations Board. Uh, the NTSB, the NTSB maintains relationships with our counterparts in other countries uh, often uh, and stay in close communication. Uh, so the director and I have uh, been in communication many times before on safety. So uh, it was a good conversation. He is uh, sending some personnel here tomorrow. Also, personnel will be arriving from the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, who uh, has the um, uh, focus of uh, being the regulator in Singapore. Now, it's not a lot of information that I can share at this time, and I know there's a lot of information that seems to be circulating. Uh, the NTSB doesn't speculate. We provide facts. And uh, so there isn't a lot we can share right now because the focus has been on the people. Uh, however, uh, if you know me, I like to provide information as we can when we are able to verify those facts and be open about that. Transparency is one of our mandates, one of our core values. So please uh, monitor NTSB.gov and X where we will post when we are have, having another media briefing. Uh, we do have an organizational meeting tonight at 5 o'clock, which I mentioned uh, to, to uh, determine where we want to go next on the investigation, uh, but there's a lot, a lot of information uh, we need to gather uh, between now and then in the, in the days and weeks that follow. Uh, so with that, I am going to take questions. I will call on you. Please uh, state your name and your affiliation. We'll start with Tom and then go over here. Thank you, Chair Helmond. D. Tom Costello with NBC News. You, you spoke of one of the teams within this uh, NTSB structure looking for specifically the recorders on board the ship. Can you speak to what type of recorders may be on board the ship and what do you hope that they, what information might they provide? Yeah, at this time, uh, uh, I, I will have more information about the recorders tomorrow. Uh, we chose uh, not to board the vessel today uh, to allow some time for the search and recovery, which we did not want to interfere with. That is the first and foremost. We do have some information, but we need to verify that information first before I provide that information, before I verify it. So uh, we'll have that information tomorrow or maybe later tonight if you want to check with me. Thank you. Yes. Sabina with ABC News. Um, how long will the search go on for today? Uh, the search is, uh, it's a question on how long the search will go on today. The NTSB is not in charge of the search and rescue operation. That is the U.S. Coast Guard, so I would refer you uh, to the Coast Guard for uh, that information. Yeah. Yep. Hi there, Nicole Skank of CBS News. Were the tugs uh, pulled loose before the ship lost control, and can you give us 
a, a rough timeline of when they were pulled loose, and also curious just what you can tell us about the timeline, how much time lapsed between the pilot notifying authorities and the actual crash. Yeah, there's a question on the tugs and the timeline. Uh, again, I know this is all information you're looking for. The information we get, which often ha happens in a large event where there are a lot of entities, is there are con there is conflicting information. The NTSB focuses on the facts, so we will do we will figure that out and be able to provide that information in the coming days. Today is far too early for that. Nothing on the timeline so far. How critical will a voyage data recorder be to investigate? How critical will a voyage data recorder be to investigating this? It will be critical. It's a critical piece of our investigation, which is why we have a recorder's team here. Have, have you been able to investigate or figure out why this ship did not immediately drop anchor when the power went out and they were on course to fly with this bridge? Again, that will be, uh, the question is on dropping anchor and whether they did or did not, and the timing on that, again, that'll be part of our investigation and part of our timeline. Uh, I can provide you more information on that in the coming days, but uh, not today. Rina Bhardwaj, ANI, just wanted to check, do you have any information on uh, the crew that was on board, uh, their nationality, were there 22 Indians on board? Apparently there's a report that says there were 22 Indians who were on board. Uh, the question is who was on board the vessel and uh, nationalities. I, again, I've heard conflicting information on that as well. Uh, we will have to get back to you on that. On that. Yes. Do you have any reason to believe there were major deficiencies with the vessel before it set sail? What are you learning from previous inspections? Uh, the question is, were there any deficiencies uh, on the vessel uh, before it sailed, and will we be looking at any safety information? That's. That is part of our investigation where we look at in depth at safety information, anything that may have occurred prior to this, any sort of safety history with respect to the vessel, any sort of maintenance that was done to a vessel or a the vessel or component on, on the ship. We will look at all of that, but it's much too early for all of that. You spoke about the government assets that are here. Can you talk about the private sector folks that you're working with? Are there folks from Maersk? Are there folks from the insurance companies that you're in contact with now? On the, scene today. Uh, the question is, who we, are we working with uh, from the private sector folks? I mean, certainly we're going to, we're working with the owner operators, uh, which are two different entities for this vessel. Uh, we will be working with the pilot uh, association, and uh, we will have a number of federal, state, and local partners as party to the investigation. We are going to designate those tonight at the organizational briefing, and I'll have more information on that tomorrow. Sure. Uh, given, uh, obviously, the search and rescue effort is the main focus right now, handled by the U.S. Coast Guard, but the key bridge <laughs> being such a major thoroughfare for the city and for our commerce, for our entire country, not to mention the waterways being shut down, is there any sense of urgency to get this cleaned up faster, or what exactly is the priority beyond just the search and rescue? There's a question on what's the priority beyond the search and rescue. Uh, we don't, you know, certainly investigations are a priority, certainly environmental uh, considerations are a priority, and uh, so is uh, traffic and getting, you know, cargo uh, vessels in and out of the port of Baltimore. It's not the NTSB's priority. We have a number of uh, organizations, including the Department of Transportation, Maryland Department of Transportation, the governor that's doing a lot of work on that. But this is a, right now it's about people. It's about uh, families uh, and uh, addressing the needs of those that were impacted. That's the focus. I don't think anybody in that room right now at, a, at the command post is thinking about what are the next steps to get things cleaned up. They're, fi they're working to figure out uh, who was impacted, if anyone was impacted, and how do we address that, because that is and should be the priority always. Eric Rosales with EWTN News Nightly. You talked a little bit about the families and you talked a little bit about the, the rescue effort that's taking place. Have we confirmed that there were any more than just the six construction workers that were on the bridge itself? Were there any more 
uh, possible other cars, other drivers on the bridge? So there's a lot of information. The question is on, uh, have we been able to confirm information on the number of cars on the bridge, the number of workers on the bridge? There are a lot of numbers uh, that we've heard back and forth. Uh, we need to verify that. Uh, the search uh, team is uh, doing that now, that's not for the NTSB, that is for the local authorities, Maryland State Police, uh, and the Maryland Transportation Authority, as well as uh, uh, their federal partners through the Coast Guard to be able to uh, verify that information so in particular. So right now, there could be other victims than just the six that you're searching for? Uh, there are, uh, it, it, nobody is going by a number. They are just looking and they're searching. Sure. That's what's important. Are there yep. any kind of structural protections on this bridge? I mean, can you tell us anything about how it was built? I mean, I've been hearing about dolphins, which are concrete, you know, kind of ways to stop a collapse like this. Can you tell us anything about the structure of what was there? Yeah, the structure of the bridge, there's some questions about the structure of the bridge, uh, protective uh, uh, structure around the bridge or around the piers to make sure there isn't a collapse. Uh, we are uh, aware of what a structure should have. Uh, part of our investigation will be what, how was this bridge constructed? Uh, it will look at the structure itself. Uh, should there be any sort of safety improvements? Uh, all that will be part of our investigation. We go very broad in our investigation. The question is, has uh, the bridge ever been flagged for any sort of safety deficiency or security deficiency? That is information that we will, uh, that will take time uh, to dig through. I will just point to our recent investigation of the Fern Hollow bridge collapse, which took almost two years to get information on inspections and what was and was not done after that those inspections and whether there were records or not records maintained uh, i'm that's specific to fern hollow bridge but it is very uh cumbersome process it's a very meticulous process where they have to dig through a lot of information so it will not be something that we will be able to verify while on scene Uh, the question is on the reported uh, power failure. We've heard the reports. Uh, we've been made aware of those same reports about there being a power outage. Uh, I've also seen statements, uh, uh, media releases from Singapore as well. It's something that uh, we take in, but something that we have to verify through our investigation that that was uh, what, what was part of the uh, contributing cause here. So uh, too early to tell. Yep. Uh, Andrew here from NPR. Can you confirm if the construction workers on the bridge were employed by Bronner? Can I confirm whether the construction workers on the bridge were employed by Brauner's, uh, Brauner Builders Incorporated? Uh, that is the information we have, Brauner Builders Incorporated. Of course, sometimes uh, they use co subcontractors, so uh, we don't have any information yet on subcontractors, but we do have information on the company itself. Chair, have they been able to confirm Uh, is there any information on uh, on the anybody that is unaccounted for and whether they were able to verify with the company? Uh, that is something that the federal officials, the FBI, along with the Coast Guard, will verify. Not not the NTSB. Sure. Is there any automation? Of course, there were the construction workers, but one of the people was a state inspector. Can you share any word if you know about that and that that was the person? that was rescued and taken to the hospital? Uh, the question is about a state inspector. Uh, I, I don't have information on the state inspector at this point. Uh, we are very uh, focused on getting our investigative groups up and running. Again, let the search and rescue team uh, do what they need to do uh, to focus on the people. And then uh, we are gathering information from 
the owner and uh, the owner of the ship on the, of the vessel, and then the operator and others uh, for this time. Again, uh, that was my last question. Uh, for further information, uh, and I know it's not a lot of information for the first day, but we just got here, and really the focus is on the families and the people. That is our main focus. That is everyone's main focus right now. Uh, the rest can wait. Uh, so uh, please monitor NTSB.gov and our Twitter feed uh, for the next briefing. Thank you. I'm Kai Jackson. Thank you for watching. Here's another video to watch. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel.